Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Gary Cooper with Barbara Britton, Carol Thurston, and Alan Hale in The Story of Dr. Wassell. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. With the war news what it is today, it's hard to believe that only 30 months ago, the Allies faced their bitterest reverses of the war. In Africa, German troops had launched the drive that ended at the gates of Cairo, and the glorious defense of Stalingrad had yet to turn the tide in Russia. Meanwhile, in Asia, the Japanese hordes had pinned our troops on Bataan and swarmed south toward Indochina and Malaya and the fabulous islands of the Far East. Names that we learned in our geographies at school assumed a new and terrible importance. Java, the jewel of the Indies, is a teeming island lying south of Borneo in a line between Australia and the naval base of Singapore. From Java in the early months of 1942 came some of the great news stories of the war. Tonight's play on the Lux Radio Theater, requested by so many of our listeners and starring Gary Cooper, is one of those epic bits of history. The story of Dr. Corridon M. Wassell of the United States Navy. In the midst of war and death, it is a story of saving life, not destroying it. A story of a man's love for his fellow men, and of that rise from defeat to victory that is rewarded, that has rewarded all our sacrifice and effort. For today in the Pacific, with the mightiest navy in the world, we are fighting our way back beating a path to hard-pressed China, where a gallant people struggle for the freedom of Asia. And from China, I, I have a touching story of how life goes on in spite of hardship. It was forwarded by Mrs. Chong Ni Tzu of California, and it tells how a Chinese family who had escaped the Japanese endeavored to give their son an education in free China. In the inflated Chinese money, the tuition was $14,000 more than they could put their hands on. But the mother came to the rescue. She went through her trunk and found two dozen cakes of Lux toilet soap, which she'd purchased in Hong Kong before the Japs came. And those two dozen cakes were so precious in the eyes of the Chinese that they paid for the son's tuition, which shows uh, that a good product like Lux toilet soap can perform more than one good deed. And now it's cutting time and star time as the lights go down for the first act of the story of Dr. Wassell, starring Gary Cooper as Dr. Wassell, with Barbara Britton as Madeline, Carol Thurston as Three Martini, and Alan Hale as Commander Goggin. On the 28th of April, 1942... The name of an obscure Arkansas doctor, the man who spoke it was the President of the United States, and the name was Dr. Corridon M. Wassell. The President had good cause to mention Dr. Wassell, a cause which had its beginning in the terrible trap which history now calls the Battle of the Java Sea. There, a little handful of Dutch and American fighting ships had made their valiant, hopeless stand against the Navy of Japan. Among those ships was the United States cruiser Marblehead, so completely ravaged that Radio Tokyo reported her destroyed in action. Riddled and burning, the Marblehead crawled back from the dead to a tiny port on the southern coast of Java. Among the survivors was her executive officer, Commander William Gargan. Yes, we had reached safety, a port named Jalatjab. There was a hospital train waiting to take the wounded inland, about 40 of us. It was in charge of a Dr. Wassell. He came alongside checking our medical tags. One of the boys, Alabam, had been blinded. 
As Marshall started talking, Alabama rose up in his stretcher and grabbed him tight. Tell me. Hey, somebody tell me. Where are we? Where are they taking us? Mrs. Jarvis, sailor, you're going to a hospital. Oh, my eyes. You figure you'll be able to? That's why we uh, want you in a hospital. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you Corman, third coat. Yes, sir. Get your hooks off of me. I'll beat my beat to the skipper. Shock case and shrapnel, doctor. He's plenty tough. The Marblehead's getting out of here, and I'm going with her. Once I leave the ship, I won't be getting out any more than those guys on the tarpaulins are getting out. Go that, Murdoch. I've heard just about all that kind of talk I can take. Sorry, Commander Wassel. That's all right. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm Commander Goggins. I heard tell of you, Doctor, in China. I see. Uh, you're joining us, too, huh? I'm afraid so. My legs, uh... I'll have a look at them on the train. When are we leaving? A couple of minutes, just as soon as we... Oh, excuse me. Commander, uh, I'll be right back. Madeline, I... Well, for a minute there, I thought I was seeing things. So you did go in the Navy. Well, I'm beached here for a while. Uh, I'm taking this hospital train inland. But it's ready to leave. It, it... That's, that's right. Uh... Corey, you lied to me, didn't you, back in China? Why didn't you tell me the truth? Oh, that. I, uh... uh well... <laughs> I suppose Dr. Wayne was with you when war broke out. We were all in Hong Kong. I asked you a question, Corey. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure glad you got out okay. Dr. Yes? Uh, the captain says that train's got to get out of here at once. I'm coming. Corey, I, I must talk to you. I uh, I wish we had time to, Madeline. Goodbye. Goodbye, Corey. <clears throat> I couldn't tell who the girl was, except that she was a Red Cross nurse. As the train pulled away, I could see Wassel looking back at her from the after platform. And then that Dutch nurse came looking for him. something back there, Doctor. I wish I could. Well, uh, I better take a look at the boys. Yes. I am Nurse Bettina. Wonderful thing about you Dutch nurses, you work as pretty as you look. What do you think of our chances where we're going? Yavin is safe as long as Singapore holds out. And Singapore will never fall. Yes. Well, let's get to work. This one... Let me see. This is Anderson. His tag says he is from Ma Massachusetts. Can you say that again? I like that. Well, it seems like you're pretty good medicine for Anderson, Bettina. He's sure okay by me, Doc. Thank you, Massachusetts. Over here is Murdoch, Doctor. Seaman, second class. Yes, we met before. Feeling any better, sailor? Not as well off as the rest of these suckers. When you stop beefing, boy, that I'll worry about you. You're going to find Java a right cozy place. Java. <laughs> You'd be better off on the marble. Seaman Hopkins is in surgery, sir, if you wish to do the transfusion now. You checked him? Blood pressure low. Pulse weak. Blood type? Number four. The only other type four available is a Yavanese nurse. She's with him now. Thanks, Bettina. I'll see you later. <laughs> Fine, nurse. Now, if you want to faint, go right ahead. We're finished. Doctor, I am trained nurse. Wouldn't have had to do this if we'd had blood plasma. Say, uh, what's your name? You laugh when I tell you. My name is Bree Martini. Well, I'm not laughing, and neither is Hopkins here. You see, he just about owes his life to you. I am so happy he lived because of me. Yeah, don't bother. It'll go hard with me if I kick off. A lot harder if I live. He thinks his hand is crippled. He wished to die. Your papers say you're from Gabriel, Arkansas. Say, now, uh, what does this put you in mind of? That's an Arkansas Razorback. <laughs> yep. You'll be having sow belly and greens again. I kind of forgot Arkansas. I kind of forgot it, too, till I saw a ghost this morning. Razorback ghost? No, but it was Razorback that ran me out of Arkansas. Folks there used to pay me off in hogs. You joined the Navy to get away from hogs? No, but I, I went to China because of them. They were looking for doctors a few years back. They sent me a circular. It had some pictures in it. Some of the nurses working in China. I figured they were a lot easier to look at than Arkansas hogs. Maybe like like that pretty nurse you say goodbye at, Tilapjap, maybe? 
Mm, maybe. You start counting Razorbacks, Arkansas, and get to sleep. Nurse, I reckon you better stay right by him. Oh, I watch. His blood and my blood, they all mix up together now. He is part of me. Always. That's nice. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. They took us off the train at a little town near the jungle. It was like a kind of heaven. A fine, clean hospital and the best care in the world. A Dutch doctor was there named Franken. One afternoon, he sent for us. Me in my wheelchair and Corey navigating. Sorry to disturb you, Dr. Rossell. Glad you did. Hey, take a look, Bill. Candy? Cigarettes. A mail. That's the best medicine on the ground. Gentlemen, let me turn up the radio. More Jap rumors. I don't know about rumors, but I do know the facts. Singapore's in the hands of the Japanese. That's impossible. Singapore was captured yesterday. What job is, is next? What's that on the radio? This has been going on for the last hour. Java Sea infested with enemy surface craft. The government urges immediate evacuation to the southern central coast. May I repeat You want to hear that? any more? No, the turn it off. urges immediate evacuation. You know what this means. Unless the Japanese can be held, it will be impossible for any of your wounded to escape. We should have orders from Jalat Jap momentarily. Thanks, Doctor. Well, let's get at these packages, Bill. 60,000 Japs are no reason to hold up the We alone knew the danger, knew how close it was. The boys in the ward, all they knew was that slowly they had been getting better. And they were demonstrating that happy fact in the obvious way. <laughs> All right, come on now. Who's next now? Who's next? Hey, three martinis. Yeah, come on, baby. Cut us a rug, huh? What crazy talk, cut rug? He means dance, you know. Sure, yeah. like this. Oh. <laughs> I show you beautiful Java dance. You watch. Oh, no, not like that. Get hot, baby. Swing. Yeah, yeah come yeah. on, swing. Oh, well, like they do in movies? That's right. Oh, okay. I get hot. <laughs> Hey, cut it out. Here comes the doc. Hey, pipe down, you guys. It's the CO. Hey, get back in your bed, you dumb fuck. Hey, what in the name of Mrs. Murphy's cow is going on in here? Hey, I, I thought you said you were a trained nurse. You're jumping like a trained flea. What? I, I just make Pixie's bed, doctor. Yeah, you make Pixie's boys' temperatures at about 120. Say, what you got there, doc? Cigarette? Cigarette. All right, all right. Now, wait a minute. Three martini. Pass them out. There's mail, too. Here you are, Alabama. Yeah, well, don't open it, Doc. I'll just uh, hold it a little while. Poppy? Thanks, Doc. Would you uh, open it for me? Want me to read it to you? Would you, Doc? Kind of hard to hold with my hands all done up. From Alice, huh? Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, dear Hoppy Boy, she writes a nice hand. It's uh, over four weeks since I wrote, but there was a reason. You see, Hoppy, I've had time to think things over lately about you and me, I mean. That's why I feel I've got to tell you... Uh, tell me what? Well, it, uh, it's kind of blurred. How do you mean? What's happened? You got married, Hoppy. Married? Look here, Hoppy. Uh, that happens sometimes to all of us. It happened to me in China. It, uh, Panic. You know the rules. Congress and patients to the center. Walking with us on the feet. What are they? Make a bulk head in front of those windows and get the men under the bed. What are they keeping us here for? We'll be buried alive in this dump. Easy, sailor. Easy. Don't you give me that. I heard all about you. You flopped in China and you flop here. Murdoch! Let him alone, Bill. Maybe. Dr. Russell, there are glass splinter wounds in the west ward. Dr. Frank can ask if you will help him. Sure. Bill, you're in charge. Eh? Okay, Doc. All right, you guys. All of you. Can you hear me? Yes. Murdoch. Yes, sir. I just got one thing to say. And I'm only going to say it once. Dr. Wassel went to China to fight a plague. He left China when and because his work was done. Now get that straight, all of you. 
All right. Francis. Sir? Come on, break out some swing on that Bronx bagpipe of yours. I thought the commander thunk it stunk. Go on, don't argue. I had told the boys the truth, but it wasn't all the truth. He had been fighting a plague in China, something called schistosomiasis. Corey was convinced that the carrier of the disease could be found in the shell of a certain type of snail. He built a tiny laboratory near the Yangtze River and spent a lot of his time on a sagging wharf peering into the muddy water. Hey, hey, look, Payne. There's one with a different expression. Here, hold my legs while I fish him out. Yeah. Oh, Miss Madari. Hey, what's in thunder? Hey, hey, give me a hand here. Your assistant offer apology. I'm afraid I'm to blame. Hey, hey, why you? Oh, why you're the girl in the circular. Am I? Well, you were almost the man in the river. You must be Doctor Wassell. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the snail snatch uh, catcher. <laughs> I'm Madeline Arnold, nurse at the mission hospital. Well, I, I work there. That's how I've heard so much about you. I've been seeing some patients in the village. Oh, uh, are you <laughs> interested in snails, Miss Arnold? Well, I'm interested in anything that'll stop this plague. Maybe you'd like to take a look at the laboratory. You found something? Oh, no, but maybe you'd like to take a look anyway. <laughs> I'd be delighted. <laughs> that was the beginning. Weeks later, they met again in the mission hospital, and Madeline became his assistant in a little world of test tubes and cultures and microscope slides. No, that's not now. Mm, so jealous. You know, I want to tell you, uh, I think you have the most beautiful... Yes? The most beautiful sterilization technique I've ever seen. I know something much more exciting than that. The Board of Governors met last night to decide on new assignments. They're appointing a new chief of research. Madeline, hey, you don't think that... The governors are all terribly impressed with your work, especially Dr. Wayne. Oh, Corey, wouldn't it be wonderful? The board, Dr. Russell, appreciates the devotion you have shown. Thank you, Dr. Holmes. That is why we are asking you to accept the most trying post. We wish you to pioneer an outpost clinic in Kiangxi. Kiangxi? Of course, if you wish, you may refuse. Mm, no, no, I, I just kind of thought... No, no, I'll, I'll go. Yeah, <laughs> good. Dr. Wayne, our new research chief, will see that the data you send in receives every attention. I want to congratulate you, Wayne. Thanks. Oh, Wassel, about Madeline. Madeline? She's volunteered to go as your assistant. She can't go. In spite of the risks, she's put in a formal request. She still can't go. I'm interested in her, too, Wassel. Deeply interested. There's just one way you can prevent her from going. Yes, I know. Don't worry, I'll go along. The clinic comes first, but I won't be bounced around like a rubber ball. I was assigned to Dr. Wassell, and I'm going with him. You can't, Madeline. What do you mean, I can't? Because he's gone. Wassell left for Kiangxi last night. Yes? That much I knew about Wassel's life in China. Someday, perhaps, I'd learn the rest. Well, the Jap bombing did a lot of damage. But the hospital was standing when their planes withdrew. By morning, there was still no news from Jilatjap. The boys were reading or playing cards. And Andy, who couldn't take his eyes off Bettina, was dictating a letter. And then say, You turned the hardest part of my whole life into the best. Whenever I shut my eyes, I, I guess I'll always see your face because I love you. Love you? You know, that's a beautiful letter, Andy. Now, to whom does it go? Don't you know? Why, no. Bettina! Bettina! Jack! Kleiner Bettina. Oh, my darling. Oh, I'm so happy. You think you're on leave? No, Betsy. Dispatch for Dr. Voss. Well, I will find him for you here. Address this letter for this nice boy here. His name is Andy. Uh -huh. 
Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Hello, Andy. Say, uh, you wouldn't be her brother, would you? No. No, not her brother. Oh, to whom shall I send this letter? Oh, forget it. I'm not going to send it. You like Bettina, don't you? She's all right. I like her, too. Well, how was I to know she was your girl? She is not my girl yet, Andy. And Borby can't know what's ahead, can we? So what? Well, if anything goes wrong, you and I both hope that somebody will take care of her now, don't we? And when the war is over, the luckiest man will win. What is wrong with that? Mm, nothing, I guess. It's a deal. Dr. Vossel is in the office, yes. I've good news for him, Bettina. Oh. For all these American boys. They're going home. Derek, that is true? When? These orders say right now. Oh! Hey, did you hear that, guys? Did you hear? We're going home. Home? Hey, what's this about home? Poppy, you take me with you to Arkansas? Hey, guys. Hey, guys, Johnny. Whaley, Krauss. They're shipping us home. I heard him say it. We're going home. Doctor, I assume the orders say you're to leave from Jalatjap. Corey, what about that? Jalatjap? We're not leaving. What are you talking about? Listen to the rest of this. You are to evacuate only those who are able to walk. All stretcher cases must remain on Java. I see. Well, that dry docks me, doesn't it? I suppose they must fill those ships with men who can fight. All stretcher cases must remain on Java. You better get out there and tell them. Hey, hey, whoa, now wait a minute. Seems like you fellas are ahead of the game. You haven't heard the bad news yet. It's the best bad news I ever did hear. <laughs> yeah, sure, Francis, but we can't take any chances on that leg of yours. I'll be dancing on that by the time we get home. Yeah, uh, well, home. Huh? Hey, hey, Doc, when I get home, they're going to have to run me down to put shoes on me. Hey, Doc, when do we up anchor? Well, it's like this, fellas, you see. I, I, I've got to decide... Uh, that is, I, I can't take it. Doc, you, you wouldn't hamstring me for what I said yesterday. You wouldn't leave me, would you, Doc? I wouldn't leave you, sailor. I, I wouldn't leave any of you. I'm going to take you all, every doggone oh! one of them. Doctor, please, I go too with Hoppy to Arkansas. You couldn't do that, Three Martini. Oh, his blood is my blood. You cannot pull them apart. Oh, please, Doctor. It is bad if you take him from me. Bad. Bad. Maybe so, but we got no choice. Then evil will follow you. Big evil will come to all of us. Soon. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a few minutes, we'll be back with Act Two of The Story of Dr. Wassell. And now, may we present three pretty girls. Janie. How do you do? And Betty. How do you do? And Sue. How do you do? We certainly wish you could see these girls as well as hear them. One of them is very blonde. That's, uh... uh Janie, Mr. Kennedy. And one's got black hair. That's, uh... Betty, Mr. Kennedy. And Sue here has, well, I guess you'd call it red hair. So you see, they're quite different types. But they've got one thing in common, and that's why they're here tonight. You want to tell our audience about it, girls? Oh, certainly, Mr. Kennedy. We're, We're lots girls. girls. Yes. These three pretty girls with three different types of coloring are all Lux girls. Girls who have found that regular care with Lux toilet soap really does make skin lovely. And so they've made this gentle soap nine out of ten screen stars use their beauty soap. They take active lather facials every single day. Right, girls? Right. Right. I'm sure our audience would like to know exactly how to take one of these beauty facial girls. Well, uh, first you cover your face with a nice, creamy lather, plenty of it, and work it in thoroughly. Then you rinse with warm water, splash with cold, 
and then tapped with a soft towel to dry. Thanks, girls. That sounds simple enough. The fact is that in recent tests of these beauty facials, actually three out of four complexions improved in a short time. And that's why lovely young girls like these depend on Lux Toilet Soap Care. They've proved it works, haven't you, girls? Oh, yes, Mr. Kennedy. It really does. Make a girl's skin lovelier, lovelier, lovelier. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act two of the story of Dr. Wassell, starring Gary Cooper as Dr. Wassell, with Barbara Britton as Madeline, Carol Thurston as Three Martini, and Alan Hale as Commander Goggins. <laughs> Closing in from either end of Java, Dr. Wassell brought us back to Gilad Jap. A ship was there getting up steam, the Pecos, a tanker. It looked as if everything on the island was being pushed aboard. All told, we numbered 41. Eleven of us, including myself, were stretcher cases. And while we waited, Corey did everything he could to make us seem less conspicuous. Hurry up and clear their teeth. You'll have to load faster than this. Hey, you fellas, heist yourselves up a little. Do you want to be taken for a bunch of stretcher cases? Well, ain't we? Pipe down, Johnny. Well, keep that leg covered up, Bill. It sticks out like a pine tree in a parlor. You too, Whaley. It sure is hard to keep you fellas off your feet. Hey, what's the matter with him? Is he going bad? We'll take four more of yours, Commander. Okay. Power, Fox. These men here, Commander, these are walking cases, aren't they, sir? Uh, yeah, we, uh, we just used the stretchers to rest them. Well, you know the orders, sir. Pretty close, Corey. Stop the balance of equipment on the harbor. Clear that deck for the ammunition. Judas, brief, what goes on down there? What stretchers are those? Commander Marshall's casualties, Captain. Men wounded on the Marblehead in Houston. Orders are no stretcher cases may embark. Take over here. I'll see about this one, sir. Aye, aye, sir. What do you mean, misunderstanding? You got your orders, Doctor. I'm here to evacuate my casualties, sir. Your instructions were to bring walking cases only. But, Captain, the Pegasus can take all of these. We're packed now from truck to keel. And we have to pick 450 survivors of the Langley at sea. We'll be bombed and torpedoed. Sir, my boys have fought hard for their lives, and I don't aim to have them thrown away on the beach. Would you rather see them die in the sea? Yes. You'll send those men back to the hospital they came from. Moffat, disperse a thousand guilders for Dr. Wassell's wounded. I'm sorry, Doctor, but no one can change these orders but the chief of staff, and he's already at sea. If my own son were lying there, I'd have no other choice. Then I'll stay with them. That means you'll be captured, too. Well, they'll need me more than ever, then. All right. Your orders are changed to read. Whatever happens, you will stay with your wounded. Thank you, sir. In a few minutes, you'll be ranking U.S. Naval officer on Java. God help you. And so they lowered us back on the wharf again. We couldn't kid the boys any longer. He had to tell them they were being left behind. I can walk. Just give me a chance. No, Hoppy, no. I gotta get on that ship. Lie down. Stay on that stretcher. If you just give me something to lean on, a, a stick or something. I can make it, Doc. I gotta. Listen, you fools, don't you know some of you are hurt real bad? Well, I, I can walk, Doc. If somebody will just show me where to go, I... Yeah. She's going. There goes home. Home? Hey, Doc, you... Isn't there any other ship here? No. No other ship, fellow. This is what we fought for. This is the end of it for us. To be left on the beach with the Japs coming up on both sides of us. We'd be ten times better off dead. Now, wait a minute. It's about time you boys remembered something. This is the U.S. Navy. And while you're alive and while I'm alive, you'll act like it. You may be the last of the Navy on Java, but your Navy just the same. Now, we'll go back to the hospital... With some good clean beds and a week or two of rest. And then... And then the Japs. We'd better get on that train, Corey. It's the last one out of here. They told me they'd be dynamiting the bridges behind us. We were back at the hospital by nightfall. Except there wasn't any hospital. Just gutted ruins and flattened rubble. The bombers had returned. The silence of death hung over everything. The creeping fear of an approaching enemy in the darkness. Yeah, good clean beds and a week of rest, huh? 
Well, it sure needs sweeping up around here. Doc, over there. Something moved. Stand fast. Three martinis. I know you come back here. I wait. Sister, you sure win the crystal gazing contest. Hoppy. Hoppy. I know you come back to me. Where are the others? Were they killed? Did they go with Dutch army in mountains far off? Japanese take this place pretty soon now. Bettina? Where's Bettina? Dutch lieutenant take her away for nurse on boat. You're head nurse then. Where's some food? Doctor, I can milk coat. If we can catch coat. Well, mine's loose around here somewhere. Hey, sounds like we're going to have company again. All right, we'll spend the night in the bomb shelter. I'll have a look in the village in the morning. I'll get help. It's probably better to eat than go to milk. Easy now. So we call this the bomb shelter, eh? What happens if we get a direct hit? We get buried, that's what happens. They wouldn't have left us in charge of Uncle Fudd unless they'd wrote us off. Shut up, guys. Here he comes. I, uh, I didn't aim to hear what you fellows were saying just now, but I... I, uh, want you to know... You know something? Something busted you. I think it happened in China a long time ago. Where'd you hear that? Oh, I've been around a lot in China. All I heard were fragments, Corey. You... You spent some time in Kangxi, didn't you? Some. You ever hear of that plague they get up there? Sure, you traced it to a snail, didn't you? Well, in the way I did, I worked pretty hard on it, Bill. Finally started to get some results. It was a snail, all right. Rather, some bugs that lived in a snail. Hey, Ping, come here. Come here. Say, take a look at that and don't faint. How many tails has that critter got, Pink? Two, like a tiny dragon. No. One tail, and it's forked. That parasite is the forked-tailed sucaria. Oh, we found it, we found it, we found it. Your name will be high on the roll of science. It will be on everybody's... See who's at the door, Pink. And uh, don't let him in until I've had time to lock this critter up in a glass. Miss Madeline, this is most pleasant surprise. Pink... Well, aren't you going to let me in to see him? Oh, he has the greatest thing to tell you. Listen, I've come a thousand miles up the river to see him. Hey, what's the mystery? He will want to tell you himself. You mean he's been talking about me? About nothing but you and the snails. <laughs> Who won? <laughs> Miss Madeline, if you will proceed to the temple of Kuan Yin and sit under the sacred dog by the moon gate, very soon, I promise, he will come and tell you. All right, Ping, but remember, I don't want to send my, spend my vacation with the sacred dog. Vacation? Oh, but you will be so happy when you hear. That is, if you have not... Uh, if Dr. Wayne has not. But you have not. Have you? Anything can happen in China, Ping. Oh, Dr. Wassel must lose no time. <laughs> Fish are mighty near as pretty as Arkansas catfish. I thought catfish were plain mud colored. Oh, no, no, no. They're all gold and silver. And there's one kind called the uh, swivel whiskered catfish. <laughs> it's all covered with little strings of electric light. Corey, I'm worried about you. It just don't make sense. Golden catfish. And wearing a primrose in your buttonhole. Oh, that's, that's in celebration. Of what? Uh, something I know and you don't. What's the secret, Corey? I know something that nobody else in this whole world knows. And when you hear about it, you're going to climb right on top of one of those statues and maybe fall off, and I'll catch you. And uh, <laughs> Your hair sure looks pretty. Today. Corey, let me take your pulse. The excuses some women make to hold a man's hand. Oh, there is a man, you know, who wants to hold my hand. Oh, Dr. Wassell. Yeah? Please excuse me. But a telegram would seem to indicate haste. Haste is for those in a hurry, Ping. Here, give me that. And uh, goodbye. Uh, who did you say wanted to hold your hand? Dr. Wayne. Oh, him. He also wants me to marry him. Poor Doc Wayne. I sure feel sorry for that fellow. Because I may accept him? No, because you won't. Because you're... You're... Corey, what is it? What's the telegram? Oh, uh, 
Nothing. Nothing that amounts to anything, but... Let's see, we were... We were talking about catfish, weren't we? Yeah, that was it. I was... I was telling you about the lace-trimmed kind with the green and yellow stars. And I was telling you that one of the most brilliant men in China wants to marry me. Well, I... I don't hardly see how it's possible for... Any girl in her right mind to refuse him, do you? Corey, there's something you're not telling me. Yes. Yes, there is. I'm I'm sending in my resignation. Corey, why? Oh, restless, I guess. I was thinking some of applying to the Navy. But your work... Madeline, I swear to heaven there's not a thing in the world here that interests me a bit. Nothing, Corey? Well, take Doc Wayne. He's, he's just the type of fellow for this kind of work. You and he'll go a long way. I believe you really mean it. Yes, Madeline, I I really mean it. Dr. Wassell, back so soon? Is Miss uh, uh, Madeline happy about the forktail Sicaria? I didn't tell her. Well, when you left here, you... She's... Uh going to marry Dr. Wayne. You did not tell her anything? No. This telegram came first. Oh. Dr. Wayne has... Dr. Wayne has found the forktail Sicaria. His brilliant achievement will save countless lives throughout China. Please send all data you... But you should have told her what has happened. If she knew, she would stay with you forever. Sure she would. She'd be sorry for me. No, pain. No. So that was that, eh, Corey? Well, I guess maybe I was a fool. There's nothing new about that, Bill. You're going to hold the bag for the rest of your life? Only I'm not holding it for just myself this time. I wish I was. Down there lies all that's left of the United States Navy on Java. Ten helpless men, about as good as dead. And now, now that... Listen, listen. Bombers again. Wait a minute. Those aren't planes. That's mechanized stuff. Trucks. Bill, are you sure? Certainly I'm sure. Don't you think I know my business? And don't answer that. If that's the Dutch withdrawn, and, and I can get me the loan of a truck, I... I... You're, you're crazy, Corey. That must be Japanese artillery. I can hear the case on. I'm going to scout that column. What do you mean, you chump? That's clear beyond the Temple of Borobudur, three miles by the road. I'm not going by road. I'm going to stick a feather in my shoe and scorch a beeline straight through. But you can't do that. Your orders are to stay with your men. I broke orders before when I tried to get the boys on the Pecos. What will happen if you don't come back, if you're killed? I'll get court-martialed for sure, but until then... Until then, this is still the United States Navy. And I'm still in command of it here. Sit tight, Bill. I'll be back. <laughs> Mr. DeMille and our stars will return in Act 3 of the story of Dr. Wassell. And now, let's look in on a party. A party that has reached its most exciting moment. Girls, I don't think anyone ever had a lovelier shower. Goodness, here's another gorgeous package. Open it for me, Sue. I'm much too excited. Bath towels. What a luscious color. Oh, and washcloths, too, to match. From Marion. Oh, here's another package inside. Why, Marion, you think of everything. Look, girls, three cakes of my favorite Lux toilet soap. <laughs> What's a bathroom shower, Mary, without the main ingredient, the right kind of soap? Now, there's a practical giver, and a thoughtful one, too. Fragrant white Lux toilet soap is right at home with the most luxurious bathroom accessories. Screen stars have discovered this about their famous complexion soap. It makes a wonderful bath soap, too. Here's what lovely Irene Dunn says about it. A daily Lux Soap beauty bath is a wonderful way to make sure of daintiness. Active lather is so gentle, so thorough. It leaves skin really fresh and sweet. I like Lux Soap's delicate, clinging fragrance, too. Screen stars, women everywhere, find Lux Soap's creamy, abundant lather does a thorough job. Swiftly carries away every trace of the day's dust and dirt. Why not let the whole family enjoy fragrant, refreshing Lux Toilet Soap for their daily bath soap? It's thrifty, you know. Each satin-smooth cake is hard-milled, 
can be used to the last thin sliver. Why not get some Lux toilet soap tomorrow? And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. After our final curtain, you're invited backstage to meet our stars in person. And now here's Act Three of the story of Dr. Wassell, starring Gary Cooper as Dr. Wassell, with Barbara Britton as Madeline, Carol Thurston as Three Martini, and Alan Hale as Commander Goggins. In the darkness, I sat and listened to the rumble of the mechanized equipment on the distant road. I had plenty of time to size things up. We were 11 wounded men surrounded by jungle. Where our next meal was coming from, we didn't know. I found myself wondering which I'd select if the choice were mine. A Japanese bomb, or starvation, or capture. I looked at my watch. By now, Wassel would have reached the road. Maybe they had already found and shot him, or maybe the column was a friendly one. Dutch, or maybe... 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 British. They're British. Hey! Hey, you in the Jeep! Hey, wait a minute, hey! Hey! Hey, pull up, pull up. What in the name of... Up on that embankment, sir. Look, slow down, Beanie. All right, sir. Hey, excuse me, sir. Are you the CEO? I'm afraid I'm the only officer left. Well, I'm Commander Warsaw. I got 11 men three miles from here. Can you take them aboard? Certainly. What? What'd you say? Put them aboard anywhere. Well, yeah, that's the best word I've heard since... Say, hey, I wonder if your men could help me with my boys to the road. They're wounded. Wounded? They'll never stand the going, old man, over trees, through rivers. I promise you these boys have got climbing hooks and webbed feet. They're American sailors. Sailors, eh? Bainbridge, Bainbridge, take a lorry and pick up this officer's men. Yes, sir. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks a million. Not at all, old boy. All right, Beanie. Get going. Uh, uh, by the way, where are we going? There's a ship or two meeting us at Gillette, Jeff. We're going to Australia. An hour later, we were hightailing it down that road with the rest of the convoy. All of us were in the one truck except Hoppy. He and three martini were behind us in a jeep. Corey seemed a little worried. Every few minutes, he'd ask Johnny if the jeep was still there. Hey, can you, can you still see Hoppy? Yeah, he's all right, sir. He's back about six trucks. How come Hoppy gets a private jeep? Because he shot up worse than you are, fella. What I want to know is how he gets the name. What's he got that I ain't? A private jeep in the day? What's that? Jap artillery and don't ask stupid questions. Commander Wassell! Hey, Corey, that man on the motorcycle. Yeah? Commander Wassell! What is it? Chaps have broken through, sir. They're shelling the bridge at Gambon. Gambon? Well, that's just ahead. We're making a run for it, sir. The bridge is just beyond the village. Cross it at full throttle. Okay. Hang on, boys. Corey got us safely across the bridge. Then he stopped the truck. He checked us over and then turned and looked back. What had just been a bridge was suddenly a gaping chasm. Hoppy and three martini had not made it. Corey jumped from the truck and disappeared toward the edge of the chasm. When he came back, he was alone. Somewhere on the other side, alive or dead, we had to leave them. Hoppy and martini. Hey, driver. Martini, you okay? What about the driver? He, he is dead. Dead? All well, right, we should be dead, too. That shell threw us clear down the canyon. No, no. Oh, my leg. Hey, come on. Get me up. Oh, yes, Hoppy. Well, we'll be all right. Dr. Wassell will come back for us. He will not come back. Sure he will. Look. The bridge... Yeah, I see what you mean. Couldn't come back if he wanted to. You do not care? Yeah, somehow for a long time I knew I'd never leave Java. I make you forget that, Arkansas. Listen, you. I'd trade you and a thousand like you for one handful of Arkansas dirt. But I could make a good splint for my leg if I had some of that bamboo. I, I go get it. Look. Look, there's something in jungle. Where? Down near bamboo in long grass. Japs. They take no prisoners, Hoppy. 
Not in jungle. They don't take us prisoners anyway. There was a Tommy gun in that jeep. Yes, Hoppy. You see here. Keep down. Yes. Now, get these bandages off my hands. But... Go on, go on, get them off. Hey, look. I, uh... I didn't mean what I said about you in Arkansas. I don't care anything about not going back. So long as this is where you are, well, that's where I want to be. That made me so happy. Whatever happened, I am happy now. And a girl. All right, now the bandages. All right, pull them off. Go on, you're not hurting me. Your hands, they're so burned. Hoppy, try not to hurt them worse. I'll be careful, baby. Hoppy, I love. Sure, kid. So do I. You mind if I kiss you? Oh, I don't mind, Hoppy. Thanks. Hoppy, look. Look, they come. Yeah. Okay, baby. Here goes. Dr. Wassell. Trouble? They're going to stay here, Doctor. Make a stand in the Cully Swamp. The captain sends his regards and says you're welcome to keep the lorry. Uh, what about your transports? They'll, you'll, you'll miss them if you fight here. I'm oh, sorry to say the transports ran into a spot of bother. They're all at the bottom of the Java Sea. Nothing got through except an old converted something or other called the Jensen's. Any an old converted wash tub would look good to us. She's refueling now at Gillette Chap. She'll sail immediately. You better hurry, sir. Sure thank you, British, for what you've done for us. Please tell your skipper that. I will, sir. We'll give these termites a useful show. Good luck. We saw no ship waiting for us when we reached the shattered wharf at Jalachap. Anyway, we got out of the truck. We had survived the run reasonably well, all except Andy. He started to hemorrhage, and while Corey was doing what he could for him, two men suddenly appeared out of the fog. One was Dirk van Dahl, Bettina's Dirk, and the other was a Dutch naval officer. Dr. Vossel, this is Captain Rick of the cruiser Janssen. Doctor, we expected to find your ship at the wharf, Captain. She's standing in the harbor, Doctor, waiting for a chance to slip out. But I want you to know it's murder to take your men aboard. We are the last ship evacuating Java. They will hunt us from the sea and from the sky. You, you refuse to take us? I simply okay. insist that you understand the facts. All right, fellas. You heard what he said? Now you know what's ahead of us. And if you want to go back, I'll go back with you. Doc, we joined the Navy to see the world. We've seen Java. The rest of you, what about it? I think we understand the facts, Captain. We're ready to go. I'll bring up the lunch. Okay, here's the last man. Hoist him carefully, Dirk. He's hurt bad. Andy. Hello, Dirk. Hang under the side of that stretcher, Andy. Something was busted dirt inside. I'll never make it. You, you better put me down. Andy, look up to the rail. Bettina's there. She's on the ship. Come on, Andy. You can make it. One of us has to take care of her, Andy. It's up to you now. You've got to get aboard that ship. Aren't you coming? We're expecting visitors. I'm on the reception committee. Don't tell Bettina. You're you're a swell guy, dirt. I'll take care of her for you some way. Thank you. We huddled on the after deck as the Jansen slipped out of the harbor, hidden by the fog. We knew the Japs' destroyers were waiting for us, that their planes hovered in the mists above us, and then at dawn the fog lifted and the danger struck. Zeros. They came at us from three quarters, little silver pellets in the sky, peeling off and... Blazing a hailstorm of death across the decks of the Jensen. You in the next ship! Below! Below! Hey, mister, put those sandbags in the winch barrel and then drag out the head. The captain says we need any help, doctor. You make out. The helmets are in the lifeboat lockers. Tell the captain what you play. Johnny, break out those helmets. My eyes are right. Here you are, fellas. Crawl into those Easter bonnets. Lord oh, Dick's been hit. A doctor. He's right. bleeding seriously. Okay, I'll be right there. Uh, look after these boys. I did not want to meet him and 
you. It's, it's Dr. Wayne. Oh, yes. It's Dr. Wapple, isn't it? Or was it Whistle? Uh, I haven't seen you since Madeline was... Uh, since, uh... Yeah, since we were all rather interested in Snape. Yeah. Thumb forceps, please, Bettina. Uh, your wife, is she safe? Well, she was five minutes ago. You mean she's aboard? Bettina, go get Mrs. Wayne. Yes, Doctor. My wife? What for? Because she's the best nurse west of China. And I'm sh- and I sure could use another nurse right now. Mrs. Wayne, please. Mrs. Wayne. Of all people, I don't want my wife. Don't argue with me. Hold that. You sure fix yourself up good with that Jap bullet. I'm Mrs. Wayne, nurse. What do you... Oh, Ralph. Ralph. Oh, it's nothing, honey. Oh, Doctor, is he badly hurt? Why, you're not Mrs. Wayne. Well, of course I am. Well, you couldn't be. Or, or are you? Well, why, I, I, I guess you are. Why, that's just wonderful. What's well, the matter with you, Wessel? Well, I'm, uh, I'm just glad to meet your wife, Doctor. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it appears. Is my husband badly hurt, Doctor? Oh, uh, no, no, of course not. I, I, I guess, I guess Madeline got out of job ahead of us, huh? Madeline? I know who he means. Yes, Madeline will get out ahead of us. She should be in Australia when we get there. If we get there. What's that? Listen, those planes. They're different planes. Those aren't heroes. They're bombers. American ship! Fortresses! Doctor! The American! American planes! Fortresses! A whole formation! They're safe! Safe! Safe, thank God. They swept the an angels all the way into port. In the excitement, everyone seemed to forget about Dr. Wassell. But the next day, I learned that they hadn't forgotten. He came to see me in the hospital. Well, Bill, it's happened. What's happened? The hanging. The admiral sent for me. I asked who was sitting in on the court-martial. They wouldn't tell me. Are they crazy? How can you be court-martialed? Well, for disobeying orders, for trying to get you and the boys out on the Pegasus that time, and for accepting a thousand guilders, which I can't account for. Why not? I must have lost it somewhere along the way, Bill. That's a lot of money to lose. Yes, but we can testify. I can, and the boys, we know what you did for us. Thanks, but uh, it seems they're in a hurry, and you fellows are here in the hospital. Well, uh, that's all right with me. I'd like to get it over. Lieutenant Commander Wassel reporting, sir. You're late, Dr. Wassel. Uh, well, sir, the... This hadn't ought to take more than a minute. I'm guilty, all right. I went square against my orders. We just heard something on that subject directly from Washington. Washington? Yes, from the President of the United States. The President? But how do you know what... There's a chair, Doctor, sitting in it. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Gillis? Sir? Read your notes from the President's speech. Yes, sir. Referring to Dr. Wassell, the President said he first had to get the 12 men to the seacoast 50 miles away. But there were only 11. That's my fault. I reported 12 and keep quiet. Yes, sir. The men were suffering severely, but Dr. Wassell kept them alive by his skill and inspired them by his own courage. Does he know about the thousand guilders? As the official report said, Dr. Wassell was almost like a Christ-like shepherd devoted to his flock. On the seacoast, he embarked the men on a little Dutch ship. They were bombed and machine-gunned by waves of Japanese planes. A few days later, Dr. Wassell and his little flock of wounded men reached Australia (laughs) safely. He had another surprise coming. When he left the Admiral's office, his right hand about shaken off, she was waiting for him in the hall. Madeline. Coy, I'm so proud of you. So proud. Madeline, I, I, I just don't know what to say. You could say you're happy to see me. I, I, I could, but that doesn't half tell it. Would it help if I said that I love you? Madeline, it sure would. It sure would help. The next day, he came before the Admiral again. But this time, it was on the parade grounds. It seemed like most all of Australia was there, even us. They brought us from the hospital so we could see, too. The Secretary of the Navy, Washington. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Navy Cross to Lieutenant Commander Corden M. Wassell, Medical Corps, for service set forth in the following citation. Billy looks so thin and tired. Oh, it's nothing that being married to you won't help. Disregard for personal safety in evacuating wounded of the U.S. Navy under his charge in Java in March 1942. For the President, Frank Knox, Secretary of the Navy. 
It's a great pleasure, Doctor, to pin a medal on a man whose job it is to save life. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. What's he doing now, you guys? Hey, what's he doing? The Admiral just hung one on him, the Navy Cross. And now what? They're shaking hands, Alabama. I sure wish you could see it. And how's he look? Hey, how's he look? Never mind. I know how he looks. He looks just fine. Gary Cooper, Barbara Britton, Carol Thurston, and Alan Hale come to the footlights to receive our warmest thanks for their performance. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. Your listeners picked a good play for Navy Day week. Well, especially since part of the proceeds from the motion picture of Dr. Wassell go to the Navy Relief Fund. They've already received their first check for $50,000. I must say, CB, you're easier to work for on the Lux Radio Theater than you are on the Paramount lot. <laughs> Oh, you think I'm a hard taskmaster, huh? Well, after making a picture of Dr. Wassell, I can say you're a stickler for accuracy. <laughs> well, I, I felt a personal responsibility to make the story of Dr. Wassell as historically true as possible. Besides, Dr. Wassell was there watching me. How much of it is true, C.B.? Well, I'd say about 95%. Dr. Wassell himself says 98%, but... I think he's been over the story so much, he's begun to believe the extra 3% that I put in. <laughs> Have you heard anything more about the fate of Hoppy, C.B.? Only that Hoppy is still alive, a prisoner of the Japanese. I'd like to meet Hoppy in, in real life when he gets back. <laughs> you two should certainly get together when the war's over, Carol. If he's as nice as his mother, you'll like him. So you'd better be ready for that date. Just keep on using Lux Toilet soap. <laughs> You don't have to worry about that, Mr. DeMille. Lux toilet soap is a standby in my dressing room. Good for you, Carol. And, Barbara, I'm looking forward to seeing your new Paramount picture until we meet again. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. But I'm looking forward to hearing what you're going to have on Lux Radio Theater next Monday night. Well, for next week, we have an exciting and delightful comedy. The Paramount screen hit, Standing Room Only. It's the most moving, uh, fast-moving story of a young couple who find themselves very much in love and very much in difficulty in the dizzy whirl of wartime Washington. And our stars are Paulette Goddard and Fred McMurray in their original screen roles. Well, it sounds like standing room only at the Lux Radio Theater Monday night, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. You get the Navy E for tonight's performance. This week on Navy Day, October 27th, we salute the men of the United States Navy and the greatest fleet of fighting ships the world has ever known. And we salute, too, that gallant band of Navy nurses who are caring for the wounded on all battlefronts. The Navy needs more nurses, women of 21 to 40, who have graduated from accredited schools of nursing. Let me urge all of you who can qualify to do so at the nearest office of Naval Officer Procurement. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Fred McMurray and Paulette Goddard in Standing Room Only. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Housewives, remember, waste fats and greases from your kitchen are urgently needed to help win the war and win it sooner. A drop wasted may mean a life wasted. No matter how burned or discolored they are, put your waste fats in a clean can and rush them to your butcher. He'll give you two red ration points plus four cents for each pound. The story of Dr. Wassell was presented through the courtesy of Paramount Studios, producers of Our Hearts Were Young and Gay. Gary Cooper can currently be seen in International's Casanova Brown. 
Carol Thurston will shortly appear in the RKO picture, China Skies. Alan Hale can soon be seen in Warner Brothers' Hollywood Canteen, the feature picture in which many leading stars will generously appear for the benefit of the justly famous Hollywood Canteen. Heard in tonight's play were Oliver Thorndike, Carlton Cadell, Jacqueline DeWitt, Howard McNear, Ernie Andrews, Ralph Montgomery, Tyler McVeigh, Stanley Farrar, Norman Field, Charles Seal, Eddie Marr, Bill Martell, Charles Lung, Griff Barnett, Jerome Sheldon, George Nice, Eric Snowden, and Marion Burns. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Standing Room Only with Paulette Goddard and Fred McMurray.